Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this Sunday service. I'm going to start off by reading scripture from Leviticus chapter 19. I'm actually going to read two verses, starting with verse 18. It says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. And then in verse 34, it expands on this and says, The stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love them as thyself. For ye were born strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. As far as prayer requests this week, there is a sister that came down with COVID. If you could please pray for her. And she's vaccinated, so it looks like she's doing okay, but she can still use your prayers. And there are also others that are sick and afflicted among us. There are also those that are, that, that several brothers actually, that have were seeking employment and found work. So please give a prayer of thanks to the Lord for that and pray that they'll be blessed as they begin their new opportunities. And... There are others that are looking for work still. Please pray for them that they will find the employment that they need that will meet their needs, uh, pay their bills, and help them to live comfortably in the Lord. And there are a couple of people right now that are struggling with some trials right now. There's, I wish there was more we could do for these individuals. But for now, just please pray for them so that they will have the strength to overcome because that is their desire. And there is one woman in particular who is suffering from a number of different ailments. And if you could please pray for her that her needs will be met, her wants will be met, and that the things she is seeking will be found and that she will be healed of her injuries. That would be very beneficial. If you'd like to pause the video now, so you can say an opening prayer where you are, sing a hymn, please go ahead and do so. We're not going to have our moment of unity, but because of the message I have today, I'm going to read the typical Shema in Hebrew and in English, but then I'm also going to read verse 5 of chapter 6 of De Deuteronomy as well. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Elohenu, Yiva Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yiva is our God, Yiva is unity. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Reciting the Shema is my favorite part of the service, and I really do hope that those that are watching this at home are participating and repeating that with us. It is our moment of unity, and even though we don't do it at the exact same time, I feel united with you as I do it, and I hope that you feel united with all of us as we fellowship together in Christ. In case it isn't obvious at this point, today's message is love your neighbors. When Jesus was asked what the top two most important commandments were, he said the first one is to love God, and that is the Shema, right? Israel is our God. That's the first half of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yavah is our God. That's the first half of it. But over time, eventually, the Jews begin to read and add more scriptures to it. And verse 5 was added. And this talks about how to love God. So how do we love God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all that might? I definitely want to get into that in a different message. But one way I believe that we can do this is the second half of Jesus' great commandment, love your neighbors. He says the second one is like unto it. Well, if it's like unto it, 
And that means it's incredibly similar. And I would say it's the same thing. You can't love God if you don't love the creation. And Moses brought back from his time with God on the mountain some very important things here that we need to understand. One of which being that we're not out for vengeance. We don't need to bear grudges. But instead, we should love people. And it's not just Israel. It's not just other Christians. It's not just our families. It's everyone. Because, he says in verse 34, that even the stranger, those that we don't know, those are to be as one born among us. They're supposed to be like our families. Well, by the time Jesus walked the earth, there was confusion in this. And I, I personally think it's very plain and simple. If we're not supposed to hold a grudge, we're not supposed to have any ill will towards anyone, and that includes the stranger and our actual relatives and you know friends and family, people that we know, then to me, that means that that's, it's everybody. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, starting in verse 43, you have heard it said, you have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Now, I don't know who said that, but that doesn't sound anything at all like the law and the Torah. Because remember, why is Jesus here? He's here to teach the Torah, not the extra laws and all the additional things that the churches of the day had added to the Torah, but the actual law of Jesus Christ, which I call the law of love. And its foundation is love God, love your neighbor. So at this point, They've gotten so far away from the law that they're now saying, hey, go ahead and hold a grudge. Go ahead and do these things that Moses said that God said we're not supposed to do. So he says that you've been told thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for those which despitefully use you and persecute you. And why? Why do we do this? So that you can be children of your father which is in heaven so that we can be god's people so that we can be israel and then he says and this is this is the really interesting part to me at the very end in verse 48 he says be ye therefore perfect even as your father in heaven is, imper is perfect so he's giving us the definition of perfection because we back up a little bit it says that God makes the sun rise on the evil and the good. He sends the rain on the just and the unjust. And that's verse 45. So by loving everyone equally, by giving of ourselves to everyone, even those that, that hate us and despitefully use us, we're not only obeying Leviticus 1918 by not bearing a grudge and not avenging but we're actually being like god the father allowing the sun to rise and the light of christ coming from us onto the world on everyone this is what i like to call the law of love and i call it the law of love because to me, that is the law of Christ, the law of Jesus Christ. If you want to talk about the law of Moses, the law of Christ, to me, they're the exact same thing. Because where the law of Moses come from? Moses didn't go up into the mountains and scribble something out on a rock. It says that he received this information directly from God. So it's not a law of Moses. It's the law of Jesus Christ. And when Christ came, he said, I didn't come to get rid of the law, it came to fulfill it. What did he do to fulfill it? He loved us so much that he gave up his life for us. He was beaten, abused, 
and hung upon a cross. Now, most of us won't be asked to do something like this in our lifetimes. And yet, to some people, giving of themselves even a little bit hurts. There's a pain there. And that pain is our pride and our egoism that we're trying to let go of as we embrace the grace of Jesus Christ. And how do we overcome that? How do we push through it? On our own, we can't. It is through the grace of Jesus Christ that we're able to do all things. Jacob talks about that in the Book of Mormon. Any work that we do, we're only able to do it because we're moved to do so by the grace given to us by God. And that's the love. King Benjamin talks about it in the Book of Mormon also, Book of Messiah. Who are we to ask God to forgive us and to love us in spite of all we've done and then us turn our backs on others and not love them the way that God loves his creation? I have been told over and over again that this message of love is lame, boring, irrelevant, that there's more important things that we need to be focusing on. And there's always a list. So always a checklist of things that we need to do that are more important. Everything from paying tithing to fornication. But let's look at those two. What is a tithe? What is an offering? It's love. Right? So if you have the law of love written on your heart, you're going to give of your time, your financial resources, and other possessions that you have that are of this world. Because you realize that the love you have for others, through the grace of Jesus Christ, far outweighs anything that you can gain in this world. This life is fleeting. A billion years from now, you'll completely forget about whatever food or items of clothing or other possessions or money that you gave to someone else in need. That tithe, that offering. The only thing you'll have to hold on to will be the love that you have from giving. Likewise, what is fornication? From my experience, Latter-day Saints obsess over this. It's nothing more than a lack of love. It's selfishness. It's egoism. It's I want to take what I want. And I don't want to give of myself. That's all it is. So if we have the law of love, the gospel of Jesus Christ, written upon our hearts, then we don't want to take for ourselves. The more we grow in grace, the more that flees from us. Because all we want to do is love. And that means taking care of other people. It's altruism. It's not ego fulfillment. So whatever it is that's on your list of things you think is more important than love, I would tell you that Jesus is right. That if we truly love God and we truly love our neighbors, the list will become irrelevant because as we grow in grace, every law will no longer be a law. Because laws tell you what you can and can't do. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is a way of life. You won't need to worry about a list. You realize you never did. Because while we're growing in grace, Jesus' sacrifice atones for all of our sins. And 
as we grow in that love, we go and we sin no more. We can't help it. Because we're a new creature. We're born again. The Book of Mormon talks about being born again quite a bit. I highly recommend that you pull up the Book of Mormon on a PDF or some other electronic device, way, means, and search for the word love. Search for the words born again. Read what the Book of Mormon has to say about these topics. Because you'll notice that love is always in two ways. The love of self, egoism and pride, or the law of love, where we're following the gospel of Jesus Christ. And being born again, it goes into great detail about how we become new creatures. We leave behind our old lives and begin anew in Jesus Christ. I want you to know that God loves you and that I love you. You may get tired of hearing it, but I'll never get tired of saying it. You're not alone. I gave someone a blessing several years ago, and the Lord put something in my mouth, some words in my mouth that I've never been able to let go of. And those words were, as you have loved, you will be loved. I believe that those words are true. The more that we love others, the more love we will have inside of us. And it won't matter if others love us or not. Because the love that we have in us, coming from God, will be so great that it will overshadow everything else. It's my prayer that each of us can be perfected in Jesus Christ and learn to love just a little bit more. Learn to give just a little bit more. Learn to judge a little bit less. C.S. Lewis said that a true tithe and a true offering isn't a dollar amount. It's a pain amount. However much you have, when you give, it has to hurt a little. So, brothers and sisters, my challenge for you today is to love one another. Not to the point to where it kills you, but to let it hurt a little. I guarantee you the pain will never be as bad as what Jesus went through. But please, love just a little bit more. That's my message, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, 
and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before you at this time. Humbly and in gratitude. Thankful that we're able to come together as saints and fellowship in your name. And thankful for the blessings of technology that you've given us. With medicines to heal the sick. With intellectual understanding to help those that are in need of counsel, counseling, for technology so that we can reach one another, we ask at this time a special prayer to soften the hearts of those that are in positions of power that are in economic security that they will understand that by helping those around them by providing a living wage by supporting those that cannot work by helping the sick, the afflicted, the elderly, that these things will affect them in a positive way. If they are spiritual, help them to understand how it will affect them positively in a spiritual level. If their greed and their Financial disposition is all that they care about, and please help them to see the financial benefits of doing these things. There's too much suffering in the world. This is nothing new. There always has been. So as saints, as your Israel, we ask you to please help us shine your light from us through our example. Others will come into that light. That we may begin to heal the creation. Bless that those that are out there that need Christian fellowship, that need this hope and this love, this ministry of love that we are providing, that they will find these resources. They will feel the light of your love. It will shine from us to them, and it will shine through them to others. That we may build a fellowship in your name, There are many among us that are suffering, that are hurting. Their spiritual PTSD is real. Help them to overcome this affliction. And help those of us that you've called your ministry. Give us the strength and understanding and courage that we need the wisdom and guidance 
to help these people through the afflictions that they are suffering from. Please let them know that they are loved. That they are needed. Please help us as we move forward. Open our eyes that we will see the needs of others and how we can help them. Place us on the path that we may intersect with those that need us, that we will find them and they will find us. And that through the Holy Spirit, we will be able to communicate one to another. Not merely word to ear, but spirit to spirit. Help us be stronger. Help us to do better. Again, we thank you for all of your blessings. We pray that your will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Please help guide us to know and do your works. These things we pray in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to thank sorry I would like to thank all of you for coming today listening to this message I'd like to encourage you to please share this message on social media via email by our words of mouth by a word of mouth and by our actions there are many out there that need us and the only way we can help them is they know we exist. Until next week, shalom. God bless.